Hi, and welcome to episode two of In Conversation with my name is Johnny Cooper, and I'm delighted to say that today's episode will talk to Kev from nursing and Sarah from psychology. Both will give us a sense of their journeys into DCU, but also their experiences so far in and outside the classroom. I hope you enjoy today's action packed episode. Maybe let's start, let's jump right into it, okay? And the people that are watching here today are obviously looking for um, an insight into what you're doing, the programs you're studying, but I guess maybe student life. So let's jump right into it. So you're studying nursing, but at the moment you're doing place and maybe give people a sense of where you are right now at the moment, what you're doing, and then we'll, we'll go backwards if you like, and we'll start, we'll then go on to maybe how you got to DCU and your decision to come to DCU. So what are you up to at the moment? So at the moment, I am in fourth year and I'm on my um, last draw of um, unpaid clinical placement. So this, um, this last draw is eight weeks of clinical placement and I'm based in Beaumont Hospital. So I'm on an orthopedic ward at the moment, basically doing the job of a nurse. Um, but um, yes, so and actually tomorrow is my last day of um, four years of unpaid, of unpaid clinical placement. Thank God. So uh, I'm quite excited to say the least. Lots of people are obviously looking for an insight. So tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit more about placements. Okay. So what it involves and I understand there's different disciplines of nursing, etc. But maybe what you got up to a little bit more detail around the placement aspect. So what placement involves, so you go in in the morning now, so pl um, placement, so let me just start with um, how long placement is. So placement is can um, fluctuate from 12 hour to 13 hour shifts. And you go in, you go in, in the morning at half seven and you um, get your handover from the, from the night staff about your six or um, seven patients. So usually it's six patients. So you have a bay of six patients but, but, and um, you're working alongside your preceptor, which is either a staff nurse or a junior nurse and the ward I'm on at the moment is an orthopedic ward. So we're basically dealing with um, everything to do with the musculoskeletal with the musculoskeletal system. So basically patients who have like bone fractures, like for example, um, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, um, anything um, to do with the bones basically. And we're basically providing care for these patients and the treatment and to get them back home or back to their nursing home or basically to Clontarf where they get um, rehabilitation. So for example, patients who come in now with, um, we'll say a pelvic fracture, their, um, their, the priority for them would be pain management. So controlling the pain of the pelvic fracture because um, pelvic fractures wouldn't really be operated on. So we're basically, um, from a nursing point of view, we're, um, we're gonna provide them with conservative management and pain management. So conservative management would consist of um, bed rest, IV fluids, and uh, mobilization, so getting them up and walking as soon as possible, or just so to, pr to promote um, bone healing and circulation to the fractured bones. And then once they're up mobilizing to, I suppose, toward, to, I suppose, to ward level, we'd get them transferred to Contarf, who um, specialize in um, rehabilitation of the musculoskeletal system. So yeah, that would be what I would go through now on a daily basis, yeah. So you're, to say the least, very busy, but you obviously find it, um, and you're in your fourth year, you obviously find it incredibly rewarding and enjoyable. I, I would think otherwise maybe you wouldn't be at this particular point. So maybe that's a good segue into why nursing, and then maybe in a, in a moment, why DCU? Okay. Um, so why nursing? So if, I, if I'm to be very, very honest with you guys, nursing actually wasn't my first choice. It was my second choice. And a lot of people say that nursing is a vocation, but I kind of have to disagree with that because I wouldn't say that it's a, it's a vocation because first and second year, um, I suppose, well, first year mainly, I wasn't really, I wouldn't say I was the happiest with my choice, but then as I came into second year, third year, and um, fourth year, I kind of like, I grew fond of nursing and I, I grew fond of my patients. So I suppose nursing, it can grow on you, but like, I wouldn't say that it's a vocation. So, and um, with nursing, like what I get from nursing would be basically the, the knowledge base. So I have, well, from, well, when I was in first year, I didn't have a knowledge base at all, but like um, compared to where I am now, I think I would say that I have quite a vast knowledge base in terms of my medications and in terms of my anatomy and physiology. So, um, yeah, so I suppose that that's what I find quite rewarding about um, nursing, as well as that, um, my knowledge base around the terms of m medications. So for example, now, like I would take certain medications just for granted, like we'll say paracetamol. Like we all take paracetamol for granted that like it's just our ordinary painkiller. But like, um, I suppose if you were to overdose on paracetamol, there, um, it does have quite adverse 
adverse effects on your liver, for example. So yes, so I do find nursing quite rewarding now, and especially with my patients, like when a patient comes in quite ill and you're and they're um, an inpatient for like maybe two or three months and you're you're looking after them for those two or three months, it can be quite rewarding to to see them get better over those over those those two three months and to see them go back home to their family or to the nursing home so like there is there there is that aspect of nursing as well you know so i do find nursing quite re rewarding to first year so yeah Kev, could i ask you a little bit about there you mentioned and it's not too uncommon when you do come into university that the course may not have been your number one or maybe you had mm -hmm. a different university or you're unsure or Maybe you came into it going, this is definitely the course I want to do, but after two, three, four weeks, maybe you're uneasy or it's not. So maybe give us a sense, because that's common enough across all programs, people that maybe are unsure. How maybe did you deal with it? What supports were there? Did you just continue and just find its own feet? Or how did that work out for you? Um, well, what I found now, when I, when I came into nursing, I didn't have um, much friends in Dublin and I kind of didn't, there wasn't really much support at the beginning, but then once I got, once I found my feet, um, I came in through the, through, um, the access program, so mm -hmm. here. So I found access to be a huge support in mm -hmm. finding my feet and um, in reassuring me that like, um, although nursing may not have been your first choice to give it a chance and to, I suppose, to not like, um, to not dwell on the fact that like, I didn't get my first choice and to try and maybe, um, adapt to what I was given and I suppose to be to be grateful and then as well as that I suppose access would have been one of the one of the major helps and as well as that the career guidance and DC career guidance um was a very was a major help for myself in I suppose um accepting my program and accepting my first choice and helping me I suppose become comfortable in nursing as well as that when I came into first year I was given um a tutor as well so all nursing students are given a personal okay. tutor so my personal tutor was one of the um, was one of the lecturers. Her name is um, Anne Kerwin, and she was she was actually um, a major help in me finding my feet in nursing. Um, although I did struggle in first year, she was a major help. So I suppose a uh, huge thanks to Anne for him um, helping me stay in nursing. And that's really good. And I guess maybe just the access as well. And there's, there's many supports in DCU via. You know, whether you come in from the traditional leaving cert, whether you're a mature student, whether you're access in terms of you need um, support or financial assistance and so on, there's many different resources as well. So it might be just a good point to point that particular aspect out that the people that are on the, the conversation and listening in today, you might come from a, a variety of different backgrounds or different routes, etc. But there is lots, I guess, there. If I could just maybe remind people, there is a and a function if you want to ask Kev something and you hear something, oh, you want more information about <laughs> <Absolutely>. them, ask <laughs> Go away is right. The questions are anonymous, so don't worry. I won't read out your name or anything like that. But I'll just ask, um, and it might be a good opportunity to hear from a, a current student. So, if we covered a little bit around uh, nursing and placements, and maybe just some of the, the different challenges and the different opportunities and the rewards you get, we covered a little bit around, I guess, challenges in the first year. Maybe then, if we reverse back again and give us a sense, because you mentioned this already, give us a sense of coming to DCU. I know you're not from Dublin. Coming to DCU that decision, that journey, and maybe finding your feet in that space? Well, just to give you a bit of background, I'm from Cork originally. Mm -hmm. So coming to DCU in Dublin was a, a major change. But um, mm -hmm. And then when I first came to Dublin, it, it was a case where like I didn't have much friends up in Dublin. Like mm -hmm. all my friends would be back home. So finding new friends as well as that finding my feet was, was, um, did take quite some time. I would say it kind of took me the first, the first semester of first year to actually find my feet and to make new friends and to become comfortable with living on my own and everything so i would say that i i kind of struggled in first year um my first semester but i would say that like well i'm here now anyway so um <laughs> i was able to adapt to my to my situation and to um to come to dublin as well as that what made me choose dcu mm -hmm. well actually what made me choose dcu well, because um, nursing in DCU, well, you are you're guaranteed an internship with in DCU. Unlike, uh, well, I won't say unlike, but um, with DCU, you're guaranteed an internship, and you're also guaranteed placement, and your placement is given to you. So with DCU, if you do, if you go into in general nursing, you're given a choice of two hospitals, which is Conley Hospital in Blanchardstown and Beaumont Hospital in Artane, well, in Beaumont. Mm -hmm. So I chose Beaumont Hospital, so I was guaranteed an internship with Beaumont Hospital if I was to successfully complete my three years of nursing so and which I have done so I'll be starting my internship now in January for um, 36 weeks. 
Kev, the, the one that students coming from, well, in or outside of Dublin, coming up to university, the changeover, um, meeting new friends, obviously it's a, it's a different environment. There's assignments, there's group-based, there's internships, there's work you do on, our own, on your own. There's lots of new things. And obviously people, you know, find their feet at different times. So you are coming from Cork, um, which is, I guess, a couple of hours away, as you said yourself, the, <laughs> the, the challenge of meeting new people, finding your feet, what would have helped you around that? I mean, did you live on campus? Did you get involved? What would have helped you, I guess, maybe settle in um, to, to, I guess, your DCU journey and experience? Well, what made me settle in would be DM clubs and societies in DCU. Mm -hmm. So with DCU, there's a, there's a vast range of clubs and societies. And for example, I joined now, I joined the, Afri the African and Caribbean Society. So I found out a, a major help in um, making new friends and in finding my feet, as well as that DCU um, sports complex as a gym and a swimming pool so i found going to the gym and as well as that i made friends in the in the, in the in gym as well because we shared a common interest which was working out and i suppose maybe i suppose as well as that i found working out a great um stress relief so that's how i was able to adapt to the current situation so there is that as well as well as that i joined um dcu for the sock but um i was only in dcu for the sock for two years because i kind of i kind of lost interest in photography after a while so um, yes, but DC Photo Stock as well is um is, is what I joined, and I found and I found that very helpful as well in um in making new friends and in adapting to um the major change and the environment. And um, in terms of my living arrangements, I actually didn't live on campus. I lived um I lived on Dorset Street in, in my first year. So I found I, I suppose living on campus would have helped me um a lot in terms of adapting to the new change. So I suppose yeah. And for those not familiar, Dorset Street, well, it's about, well, it depends how you're at mode of transport, maybe 15 minutes away from, depending on the bus or, or so on. There's one or two questions here just around nursing, they're, and they're a little bit different. So I'll just maybe throw them across. So how did you decide on the area of nursing that you wanted to do? The area of nursing that I wanted to do? Well, um, I decided on doing in general nursing because it's very vast and there's, um, I suppose, on, like like everything else, there's a lot of there's a lot of um opportunities for progression with general nursing, and general nursing covers um a lot of areas. For for example, you're talking your um cardiology, so you're talking your heart, you're talking the um renal system, so your kidneys and your bladder, and you're talking the, the brain, which is um your um neurological system. So um um as well as that, you're talking my um with my current ward is the musculoskeletal system as well. So you're talking your um orthopedics and your and broken bones and everything. So why I chose in general nursing would mainly be because um, it's very vast and there's a lot of choice with, with general nursing, as there is with, um, with children's and general nursing, with psych nursing and with intellectual disability nursing. There's, um, there are major routes for progression in all nursing degrees, not just in general nursing, but that would be one of the main reasons why I, choose, why I chose general nursing. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for asking the question. There's two more I want to get to. And just a reminder, the questions are anonymous. So if you have something you want to ask, uh, myself or, or Kev um, around what we're talking about, please just pop it in and I'll, I'll get to it. Um, another question came in, uh, do you know where the placements, you might know, do you know where the placements are for children's nursing? Um, for children's nursing, the placements, so your, your primary hospital would be Temple Street and that's mm -hmm. for DCU. So your, um, for children's in general, your children's placement is based in Temple Street and then your in general placement would be based in the Matter Public which are both based in town, in Dublin city centre. We covered a, li a little bit around, a little bit around, I guess, where you currently are and some of the details there, your transition um, when you came into college, your journey and your decision to come to college. So lots of people that are, that are tuning in right now want to know, so what does a typical year look like? What does a, what way is it structured? Is there exams? Is you mentioned placement already, but where does the placement fit into all of it? Okay, so I'll give you an example of um, second and third year. So second mm -hmm. year consists of 12 weeks clinical placement and then th and those clinical placements are split into four weeks um, each semester. So in your first semester, you have your four weeks, you're on campus or you have online lectures, um, whatever the case may be, and then you, you're on your, your, four week, your four weeks clinical placement and then again, you're back in college for another four weeks. And then exams then take place over the course of Christmas and um, the new year. So the first two weeks in the new year would be when the exams take place then. And then you're back in college then uh, around the end of January, the beginning of February, would, when, would be when you're back in college for another four weeks. And then clinical placement again 
would be for distance per second year now clinical placement would be in the middle in the middle four weeks of your second semester and then you're back on campus then for another four weeks and then you're back on placement again for another four weeks um, after your exams in May. So, so that's um, that's heading towards the middle of May to the middle of June you're out on clinical placement for, for four weeks and then with your third year with your third year you're out on clinical placement from uh, for 18 weeks the beginning of semester all of semester one and the first seven weeks of semester two and then you're back in college then for your last um, seven weeks seven or eight weeks six weeks yeah okay yeah so so on this does come up a lot of people uh, i guess we're trying to understand in terms of potentially coming to dc trying to understand the placement the structure how it's all put together and so on so hopefully that gave a bit of a sense but as i said if you do have a question you want to maybe ask a little bit more on exactly some of kev's points there just pop it in it's, a, it's an anonymous question i'll be able to ask kev directly um looking back so you've come through or currently you're still in but you've come through a couple of years and challenging lots of placement lots of work lots of assignments i'm sure lots of fun clubs and societies yeah. and different That's things right. and i want to touch on clubs and societies now in a second as well um if you don't mind but looking back what advice or what would you maybe not necessarily do differently but what would you maybe if you're just about to come into college and you hadn't known what you know now what would that piece of advice or information be um, a piece of advice for incoming freshers, I would say, is to not be afraid and to jump into things straight away. So if any opportunity comes your way, don't be afraid to apply for it. Like, for example, when the student ambassador opportunity came my way, I wasn't afraid to apply for it. And there was no guarantee that I was going to get the job, but thank God I did. So um, if any opportunity does come your way, and um, I would definitely say uh, apply for it and to put yourself forward for any opportunity. For example, every year with DCU, um, there's a new um, student council and there's a new um, student um, class reps and even at that with DCU, SU, there's, um, there's um, elections every year so you can put yourself forward for those positions and as well as that um, with the clubs and stocks you, you're talking your um, treasurer, you're talking um, chairperson, you're talking um, junior member, like there's a lot of opportunities with DCU so what I would say is to gen it's, it's definitely put yourself forward for any opportunity that comes your way with DCU and to not be afraid to, I suppose, yeah, to not be afraid to put yourself forward is what I would tell you guys because that that's kind of what um, held me back in first year and what made me, I suppose, what made me um, settle in, uh, I suppose, what kind of, it, I, I suppose, it slowed my progression in settling in mm -hmm. when, I came, when I first moved to Dublin. Is, is a better way to phrase it, yeah. Yeah, and so it's funny, it's not uh, funny is maybe the right, right word to use, but Gary, I think Gary might be on watching in today as well, um, <laughs> for, for, from last week, was saying something similar around believing in yourself and slightly different point, but it's not too it's not too far away from it either. So it's interesting those commonalities there. And, and, and I guess if one person on the call today maybe takes it on board and might help them settle in and, and, and so on. So thanks for that, Kev. We have about four, well, about five minutes left. So if you do have a question, one came in, and this is different from clubs and societies, and I do want to touch on clubs and societies and, and being a student ambassador now in a second, Kev, as well. But um, did you do biology for the Leaving Cert? And, and how is it similar to what you do on your nursing degree? I did do biology for the Leaving Cert, yes. Yep. And um, I would say biology comes, um, I suppose, it's, um, it comes in hand. It really does. Like, because I suppose nursing is... Like it really focuses on the anatomy and physiology of the human body and as well as that the mechanism of how medications actually work on the human body so even though you don't deal with medications in your living cell you basically just deal with the functions of the kidneys the heart the liver the brain doing biology is a major help in coming into nursing that's what i would tell you the um clubs and societies and Club societies. Um, I'm a current staff member here in DCU, but I'm a former student. So, so, so I guess I see it all the time. I've been in them when I was a student. I hear about them all the time. People are always asking about them. You mentioned yourself. You joined a couple. Can you try maybe summarize your experience around clubs and societies? And also, and you mentioned this briefly already, but also what it gives you in terms of a friend group, network, meeting people, learning new skills, that type of thing. So a little bit around your journey, your experience with clubs and societies. Well, my experience around clubs and societies would be that um, I suppose it helped me grow as a person because coming, like leaving home was is one thing, but I suppose uh, like living on your own and trying to find yourself is another thing. So I found that with clubs and societies, I, like, I met like a bunch of different personalities, a bunch of different characters, and that helped me find myself and to basically like be grounded in my ways and to basically like um, I suppose if if I was to if I was to be asked now to describe myself in three words. I'd be able to, 
But like back when I came back when I moved away from home in, in first year, if somebody was to ask me now, I suppose, Kevin, can you describe yourself in four or five words? I wouldn't be able to tell you mm-hmm. or like or like who I stand for or like who I actually am as a person. But I suppose with Club Societies, you're able to I suppose find you're able to I suppose find yourself and as well as that, like you make a lot lifelong friends with club, with clubs and societies. And um I found um that, that was a major help for me. So like because I did make a, a lifelong friends um in university and with the clubs and societies as well. As well as that, they meet they meet up every week. So um with the African and Caribbean Society, they met up every Wednesday when I suppose it was allowed to, to go ahead. So this is back in first year to third year now. We met up every week. So I suppose that was a good like it, it um brought in it brought in a routine into my life when I was um living away from home. So I found that was a major help in I suppose living in Dublin for the past four years. Yeah. Justin, basically you are representing DCU um in your course. So whenever you're basically um whenever you're um out working the higher options or you're out um in schools, you're basically representing DCU as a college and as well as that you're you're represent you're representing your course as well. So what is in the Buster um it, it brings I suppose it brings in great joy because you're bringing you're sharing your experiences with um I suppose prospective students who are currently in fifth year or sixth year, telling them like that like um what the course has has brought for me, like my journey to DCU, although like everyone's journey to DCU is is very different. Like for example, my journey now was the leaving cert to leaving Cork, to coming to Dublin, to finding my feet and to finding my ways. So I suppose everyone's journey is different. And I suppose um, with um, students in fifth year and sixth year, they kind of need to hear that, that, that like not everyone's journey is going to be the same. Like some people go to college straight away after leaving cert, even though like um, like that may be viewed as the norm, but like it's not necessarily is the norm. So I suppose it's not like to give students an open, like an open mindset into thinking that like, Whatever you do after your leaving cert is totally up to you, and to not be scared to be proud of what you're doing, is what I would say that this ambassador brings. I don't know if there's a better way I could encapsulate or finish off the conversation. Half an hour is too soon. You're not going yet, Kev, because we do have a quick fire <laughs> round, and oh, I see Gary Fair Gary enough. Quinn, who's the current um, um, what would you say leader on our quick fire round, because he beat he? Olivia last week. He's tuning in. <laughs> So I can see him smiling away there, even though I can't see him, but I know he is. So, so we, we want to do that now in a second. Um, but just before we jump into that and then we say our goodbyes and thank yous because Sarah from psychology is going to come into the room then. Um, maybe just to let people know that obviously just a half an hour today, it's a very short window. We are always open. If you want to talk to a student, you want to talk to a lecturer, you want more information about anything that you heard today um, and it didn't come up in conversation for whatever reason, studenthelp at dcu.ie. You'll get us on that all the time. I know Kev and all his fellow student ambassadors are always helping out, talking to students, giving them advice. Um, we have lots of blogs online. We have podcasts. We have social media takeovers. We have lots going on, okay? So today is just one little small connection and hopefully um, a lifelong journey with everybody that's listening on the call. So because you're first up um, and last Jeez. week, last week um, Olivia got the chance to choose question one, or three questions between one and six. So which ones do you want? Which three do you want? Three questions between one and six. I'll choose two, five and six. Two, five and six. So let me just mark them so I have them. Okay, so two is DC, um, DCU has 100, over 140 clubs and societies, but who won overall club and society this year? This one's tough. This one's by a colleague, Sinead. So do you know the who, answer to that? Who won overall club? Oh, was club it Glee? It wasn't Glee, but I have a funny feeling Glee probably have won it many times. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, I would have said it was Glee now. You would have said it was. I'm sure they yeah. won something this year. Uh, the answer was LGBTQA. So unfortunately, oh, okay. that's a, that's a zero. Know. So Gar- <laughs> Gary is smiling away. What else do you say? Five and six? Yeah, five and six. So access, which you mentioned earlier on, well, not directly access, but student support. This year, DCU is giving out, it's one, or, it's one answer is right, one answer is wrong. DCU this year is giving out 100 or 700 laptops to students. 100. Uh-uh. 700, really? 700, oh, wow. that's, how, that's how generous um, and that's how supportive they are. So I mentioned to your access oh earlier on. Jeez. So there, there you go. And the last question, I think, and I hope you'll get this one right because you should be spending lots of time in the library. The name of the library on a Glass and Evan campus. The name of our library on the Glass and Evan campus. 
It's the O'Reilly Library. We'll take that answer, and that yes. is true and correct. Yes. So one out of three. I think Gary is still in the lead. <laughs> Gary is probably going to... I think well, he many? might be. I think he got two, or maybe he got three. Maybe he got, yeah, three, I think. One more question. A bonus round. No, no, no more bonus. This Olivia tried this one last week, and we, had to, yeah, we had to uh, get the teller no. Uh, we are just at the clock. has just struck half past four, so... And um, just before I let you go, we're going to take a small little break just for a minute, and then we'll pull uh, Sarah from psychology in into the room and have a conversation with Sarah. But just to thank you, Kev, for your time today on behalf no of problem. everybody no listening and everybody watching, very much appreciate it. I know everybody would have got lots of value from the last couple of minutes. Uh, do do look after yourself, and we'll chat to you yeah. very soon. Thanks, Kev. Thank you, Johnny. Bye. No bye, problem. Bye. We'll chat to you soon.